The clamps were fun, but I did need to upgrade that frame. So in the interest of making it smaller and lighter, I acquired this rotary table here. And then these are mounted to an axle across the bottom there. We have some wood pads here, and I have another one for here, so that when I clamp the scanner in, like so, we can now drive our rotation. Here's where we landed with the frame. Nice base, vertical, these two are fixed. And then this whole thing can pivot. Now I'm providing lift all the way to about here when it switches over to being in tension, which is an opportunity when we want to step our angles. Well, we start off at zero, we have a hard stop, so that's straight up. 30 degrees is there, flat is 60. 90 degrees, a little bit of 330 seconds TIG rod. This is a little tenuous, might need to help that out with some weight. Then 60 degrees above horizontal, that one's a little more confidence inducing. And finally 90, like so for straight down. I need a way to hold these lenses so I settled on doing a pinch clamp. The left one has the, oh, you can tell. The left one has it in there. And I was sort of seduced by the symmetry here for a little bit of having both of them in there and then just being able to flip it around. That actually makes it a lot harder to squeeze this, so we'll go to a one-sided pinch clamp. We have some pretty easy flexing to close it, relieve the front, relieve that inner part even a little bit more. Then I'm just gonna apply some light tension and I think that's pretty good. I put a little bit more enthusiasm on this screw here and it seems to be holding it better. It also, aha, there's my fingerprint again. I have the thing on, I've got the wedge prism in the clamp. Let's see what we get. But it is curved. And curved is a problem. <laughs> I don't understand why it's curved, because these are two planes. I'm gonna try it with the other prism as well, because one of these was coated for a very narrow wavelength and the other one is uncoated, I believe. I'm not sure which is which. Even if I rotate this, it's still curved. It's clipping now because it's shining through the wrong way, but if I flip it around so it should point the other direction now. Well, it's still curved, but it is going the other direction. Unexpected problems. I guess it might be a good thing that I bought those mirrors, the small, very good mirrors, because I guess that can be my backup plan while I figure out what went wrong here. <laughs> in my reasoning. We're gonna try the eight degree prism now. This is the uncoated one, that other one was coated. So this one should lose slightly more to reflection. I don't really think that the coating is the issue here. All right, let's see if this works. <laughs> Excitement is dwindling. And another curve. It is a bit of a sh sharper line. I think that line might be a little bit sharper. It's still curved. The gocator's down here, that's gonna send out a signal at 500 hertz with our power supply to the stepper driver, which is gonna drive the motor. It works out to 48,000 steps. That's what it's gonna to take to spin our laser pointer around 360 degrees. Bingo. Boy, am I glad to see that line. The stepping was a little bit rough, as you can see here, but it didn't really seem to affect the accuracy that much. Let's set it up and sweep an entire area to do a test of our alignment. Results look pretty good. This is 90 degrees or head on. 60 degrees looking up a little bit, 
and 120 below. Overlap, pretty good. Not perfect, we can see a little bit here. It's easier if you highlight the colors. The mirror modification is pretty simple. I'm in a bit of a reduced tool access situation at the moment. So I had a piece of wood that I put a screw in. That tape is holding a coin against the opposite side of the screw loosely. I blunted the end so I can turn the screw to adjust the angle. Obviously you have to relax the clamp maybe a little bit here or there, but that allows me to finely tilt this mirror and, and get it just right. It's double-sided tape down there. It seems to hold pretty well even when it sits sideways and it steers that beam. So here it is in the nominal position pointing straight. I lined it up on some grooves on the wall and then I measured at my target offset here and put some pieces of tape. And I put that on there and you just adjust it until you get that thing right on. Here I overshot a little bit. You dial it back in, I was able to get it quite good. Some of the beam was actually not being caught by this mirror, so I had to reorient it to make it taller. But in any case, in this scan, you're gonna see two lines coming out from this. The other thing you might notice about this, this mirror is that it's hanging over the edge and it's gonna run into the stepper motor on one part of the scan and kinda of go a little crazy, but that's okay. I scanned in the dark so I could see the beam pretty well. Despite our little hang up when we scanned over here, I feel quite good about this scan. It has all the elements. You can see the door. You couldn't see it in the camera, but there's a, a door over here. You can see the louvers on it, see part of the couch. It has this sort of explosion thing. It looks like it <laughs> blew itself apart, which is kind of fun. The walls are generally straight. There's a bit of a bow going on here, which I'm concerned about. But overall, I am liking it. After a reset and a rescan, the results are looking even better. We fixed that. The issue that I'm having though is correcting for this laser modification. There's clearly some sort of warping going on here and I haven't quite worked out what it is. The math on the, the correction that I'm doing isn't working out quite yet. It seems like the, the range is off and I'm gonna have to get into that because Right now I'm, I'm pretending that if, if the beam was normally coming out straight, it's now coming out at an angle, but in reality I'm redirecting that some distance in front of where it normally exits. And there's, there's some other things going on there. You'll also notice that the, so the laser's in the center and it's measuring down or out, and that this is not very wide relative to how far this distance is. And I'm not scaling in this direction yet, when in reality that is further because it's further away. So I've only been scaling the distance. I need to scale a couple other things. I've actually invested several hours so far into trying to <laughs> trying to decode this. So I'm just summarizing. But basically there, there's some math bugs here which I need to, to really dig into. But overall, it's working quite well. It started up here and then swept around. It was the same pattern as before but without the mirror problem. So if we look for a discontinuity where it matches up, you will find it. Uh, it's orbiting about a weird spot. The discontinuity is right there, but boy, it's pretty small. I feel, I feel good about that. I can live with that for now. Let's see if I can orbit correctly. I think you can see it. That's where it is. Pretty small. It also shows up on the, the portion above. Overall, we are definitely making progress. Increasing the distance has also highlighted the need for better exposure control. I'm losing some to the mirror, but also it's just further away, so I needed to crank up my exposure from the stock 150 or 300 microseconds to 700 or even 1000 if it's further away. Then when you have things which actually are closer, that can kind of blow it out and get funny reflections. They have control for that in the SDK, I just need to explore it and figure out how to use it. The other thing I'm looking into is the prism issue. If anyone has any ideas, they can clue me in on what went wrong with that. I haven't really worked it out yet. It seems like they generally use them in pairs when they're steering single beams, but I haven't seen a lot where they're, where they're trying to steer lines. So fortunately I have two, I can experiment with that. That's something I'll be getting into. If I have to go with the mirror, I'll be able, when I get back to my workshop, 
in uh, maybe a month or so, I'll be able to machine something that's much more rigid and a little better than pennies and <laughs> screws with wood taped together. So overall, thanks for watching and following along on this journey with me.